All right, Johnny, how are you today? Yeah, good, Stu. It's getting cold outside. I don't know if you've noticed. I have noticed the cold nights, especially. The days are fantastic, but the, yeah. the nighttime temperatures have really dropped. Yeah, we had obviously a, a holiday here in Madrid on Tuesday, and I, I went to the park to do some sport, uh, dressed all in you know winter sports gear, and yeah. ended up being too hot because <laughs> I'd overestimated underestimated yeah, yeah, yeah. temperature yeah. yeah very difficult to choose the uh the right clothes to wear at the moment because as i said you leave home in the morning it's three or four degrees and then at, by two or three in the afternoon it's up around the 18 19 degree mark exactly yeah easy to catch a cold as well as a result very easy to catch a cold very easy to catch a cold which was your situation last week i think was it, it, not? it was indeed yeah that's yeah. it, that's it. All right, good. What's on the agenda, Johnny? All right, so let's talk about Spain's economic recovery to begin with. So whereas the rest of the Eurozone economies uh, have are expected to recover to their pre-pandemic levels uh, by the beginning of 2022, Spain is the yeah. only economy uh, that's been flagged that won't reach those targets, unfortunately. Yeah, and what are they saying <clears throat> are the reasons for this? Yeah, so they're saying... Obviously, Spain's heavy reliance on tourism, um, course, not just yeah. Spain, but the southern European economies and also the supply chain issues. But it also highlights countries like Greece, which are also very reliant on tourism, that are still going to recover to their pre-pandemic uh, GDP yeah. levels as well. And Portugal also? Yeah, I, I didn't see Portugal mentioned, but I would, I would imagine so as it's not mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, there was an article in the Financial Times. Is that the one that you are referring to? I saw that one. I was reading into the um, El Economista uh, okay, article. Okay, all right, yeah. good, good. And there's yeah. a lot of um, – uh, they're hinting at the the government's inability to, to – um, what's the word? To uh, to get the economy cranking again, I think. That's, that's what I've been reading, right? A lot of economists are worried that the government's taking too long to – get these European funds or distribute the money and that could be one of the reasons for the um, for the for the for the for the lag yeah that was another point mentioned as well the delay in receiving and uh, making use of the European funds yeah 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 so there is a fair bit of criticism being um, um, being uh, pointed at, at the government at the moment despite what well, not only the opposition parties here in Spain which are you know that's that's their job but as I said, the Financial Times uh, is on the on their back. Some German economists today also said that they don't trust Spain to spend the money uh, correctly and do the things that they need to do. So there is a lot of criticism coming from the north of Europe. And yeah, the government is under the pump, under pressure. Yeah, well, I think that was a, a sticking point earlier on when these funds were being negotiated as well, particularly countries like the Netherlands and some yeah. of the Nordic countries maybe were sceptic of the, the southern European countries' um, spending decisions um, yeah, and how they were well, going to use the budget, yeah. Well, they always have, they have been for a long time. And Spain, if we go back to the last crisis, which I don't think it was as bad as this one back in 2008, Spain took a really long time to get out of it because of bad decisions that were made at the beginning, you know. Mm. Um, <clears throat> the prime minister in charge at the time was also a – Socialist Prime Minister Mr. Zapatero, and you know history will tell us that he made some bad decisions, and it took a long time to recover. And the structural changes that the government uh, has been told that it needs to do, very hard to get things done here because they call them the the social partners. You've got the unions, you've got the business lobbies, and nobody can agree basically, Johnny. And that's why things take a long time, you know. Yeah, it somewhat, somewhat sounds like what uh, goes on in France as well. That's been my experience in France whenever it could be. Well, make to, change. To, well, to give an example, the, the labor market reform. So um, <clears throat> the last financial crisis, Spain was told that the labor market needed to be reformed. So it didn't get reformed until 2015. And now the government's talking about getting rid of all of those changes and going back to what it was before. So this is what we're dealing with, Johnny, and this is where that skepticism comes from, I think. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see. And the example that you mentioned there, France, if Macron tries to do anything, people take to the streets uh, in huge numbers, which make it almost impossible to do. And although you don't get that social protest here, those 
uh, what, what did I call them before? The social actors social or something? Yeah. The social partners. Yeah. They're very influential. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, I, think that's, I think that's one of the main issues, basically. Yeah, it could be, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, you don't like to be called a laggard, uh, which, is the, which is the word that's uh, being thrown around. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. That's right. All yeah. right, good. Anything else? Well, on this one, I think we'll maybe leave it there. But yeah, we'll... We'll hope that things do start to get better soon, and that. Um, well, yeah. yeah, but you know, I've said on numerous occasions on these videos, Johnny, that I've seen it happen before. I've only been here twenty years, so I imagine somebody who's sixty is just going, "Nah, it'll never happen," you know. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, that's that, that's what we're dealing with, I think. But uh, yeah. I, I, I would love to be proved wrong. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, we will we'll see. see. We'll see. We will. Yeah. All right, good. What's next? Next, we have uh, the Plus Valia Municipal, which I think we said translates to the Municipal Capital Gains Tax. Don't really understand it myself, but I read it. I read the other day that this is a huge, um, a huge problem for town halls and municipalities here in Spain because the Constitutional Court uh, said that this tax uh, is illegal. Is that what we're talking about? So I had a read of it myself and. It is a very quite complex <clears throat> situation to get your head around. Um, so I've read what essentially has been proposed, and it, it's not so much the calculation, I don't think, which poses the problem. It's rather the means by which the government has brought it into law, which has been deemed unconstitutional. That's my understanding. Okay. All yeah. right, good, yeah. yeah. So, so basically it meant that a lot of revenue for town halls was going to be lost, and the government the other day scrambled to develop a new uh, one, I think. Yeah. So in the old system, my understanding is whenever there was an incremental capital gains on the sale of a property, for example, you would pay tax on the incremental gains. And what this new calculation system does, it proposes two methods. One is... um, so when you get your property valued in Spain, you've got what's called the suelo, which is like it essentially represents the, you know, the the construction of the property uh-huh. rather than the things that are inside it. Um, so one of these calculations is based on that value um, multiplied by a determined set of coefficients, depending yeah. on how many years you've had the property for when you sell it. Um, and based on that, the value that comes out from this calculation is the base on which you'll pay tax. The other method is based on the value of the swello. Whatever capital gains you make overall on the sale of that property, the percentage of which is represented by the swello is the base for paying tax on. Okay, all right. Yeah. So as you said, a bit complicated to get your head on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was uh, banging my head a little bit trying to read it, yeah. But for basically a big source of revenue uh, lost and then, uh, as I said, the government scrambling to get something else to fill its place, right? Yeah, well, this is my understanding. Maybe for the taxpayer, it will cause some savings because you get to choose which of the two calculations is most beneficial for you um, and you'll probably save some tax money as a result. But like you say, um, in pri- in the prior calculation, you know, um, town halls would make a, quite a lot of money on the tax um, yeah. That was paid on on those gains, so yeah, like well, you say, right. lost yeah. revenue. Well, that's right. Yeah, the the main source of funding for town halls, apart from the the uh, EB as it's called here, the um, the the housing tax, of course, is this uh, plus valia, of course, because construction has been uh, something that's been very very uh, common in a lot of places over the last 10 15 years and a huge source of revenue for town halls to give you an example Johnny um, where I am here the population's grown 25,000 people in the last two or three years you know so uh, a lot of money yeah 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 and there's a lot of other areas in Madrid that are seeing growth, population growth as well that's right that's right that's right a lot of uh, movement and that's where that um, that's where that, that money comes from for the for the town hall so yeah yeah interesting interesting hmm yeah All right, good anything else on this topic no so we'll maybe move on to the third topic which is uh, the new pay system which the government wants to introduce on the autovias so the toll system yes now I, th- I think it's, it's the, it, it's not only outdoors, is it? Is it not all motorways and highways? 
Uh, I maybe need to check that one, but I think I saw specifically Autovias as the one listed, but it may apply to other roads. Um, so yeah, currently my understanding is that the Autovias, uh, it's free to drive on them, there's no tolls, um, but they're going to introduce not only tolls and then like, um, like a fee per kilometer almost to calculate um, yeah, the cost of using the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so what I understand is that yeah, um, a lot of the roads in Spain, the, the, the motorways, the autovias as they're called here, I think except in Galicia, the Basque country in Catalonia, where a lot of the roads are pay roads, the rest of the country, they're free. So, for example, I mean, I know you don't drive, Johnny, so you don't have a lot of experience on the roads, but you can drive basically around uh, Castilla-La Mancha, Castilla-Leon, Madrid, Extremadura, and you don't pay for roads. You pay for roads when you go north, <clears throat> past Burgos in the north, you start to pay for roads. And then when you start to get into Catalonia through Aragon, you start to pay for the roads. Mm -hmm. But the majority are free. Yeah. And um, the European Union is, is saying that Spain needs to start charging for these roads. Hence the government's plan to slap a one cent per kilometer fee on these roads as of 20, end of 2023. Yeah, but before they do that, but before they do that, they're going to do something else, which is make everybody buy a sticker or something. I think, which is going to cost seventy nine euros. Oof! Yeah, that one I didn't know, and I also didn't know that this initiative came from the from the EU. Um, yeah, well, uh, yeah, it's all part of the plan to 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 increase the uh, tax revenues in Spain, not only to help pay back the money, but also to make the government more uh, solvent, I suppose. Yeah, and I think a lot of that revenue as well be used to maintain the roads. That was one of the, the points that was mentioned in what I was reading. Well, well, this is where the debate comes in, isn't it? Because we've always been told in the model up until now is that we pay for the roads through fuel prices, right? Mm. And, and through other car taxes. And now all of a sudden that's not the model anymore. Now it's a pay-per-use uh, system. That's, that's where people are getting angry. Yeah. Unfortunately, but yeah. what are we going to do? Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> what can we do? I mean, if you're only going to be using highways to go on holidays, then there's not really an issue. You pay your three or four euros to get to Valencia, and that's it. But if you're on the highways every day as a transport user, uh, sorry, as, as, a, as, a, as a transport worker, it's going to be a big, uh, a big hit to the back pocket. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Or yeah. if you use the highways to drive to work or whatever as well. Yeah, but I think they mentioned something that that's if if you are work maybe I think if you're working or taking the kids to school it's not clear exactly what's going on but there were some exemptions but um, a lot a lot of uh, a lot of extra charges coming in in the future mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and as I said people are not happy John yeah I mean yeah if you have to pay more of course you're not going to be happy. <laughs> Well, no, that's it. That's it. And with fuel prices skyrocketing, you know, if you have to start paying a charge on roads, then, um, you know, as I said before, a lot of people are angry. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. But again, if you haven't got a car, John, it's not going to it's not going to bother you. Yeah, I will I'll maybe yeah. keep it that way for now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah. All right. Did they say anything else about this or not? I think I've captured all the points there. Um, just that, yeah. There's a lot of criticism around the um, the move and all that, and all that. Yeah, so there's a lot of criticism. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, this it's a, the it's a reform package, and I don't know whether you, you you've seen it, but today or yesterday, I think they released the the reforms that Spain has to do for the European Union. This is one. Another one is the pension system, which is which needs to be reformed, the labour market, all of these reforms that the government has to put in place if they want to get that European money. Yeah, I, I saw, I didn't see the details of it, but I did see that, yeah, there were, now it seems like there's conditions uh, that Spain needs to implement to have access to those funds. Exactly, that's that's a good word. Yeah, the conditions, that's right. Nothing, you know, you don't get the money for free. But then again, you know, it could be argued that uh, Spain is one of the only countries in the European Union where you don't pay for roads this way. I think, I think in France, there's tolls on the majority of roads. Portugal has tolls on the majority of roads. Spain has been fairly toll-free, at least, as I said, in the majority of the country. Mm. But uh, another unpopular move. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, and it's all going to be how the government sells it, I suppose, to the um, to the population. So, but what I'm hearing at the moment is that people are not happy. But we'll see. Same, yeah. All right, good. Anything else, Johnny? That was all for this week, Stu. All right, good chat again. We'll be in Likewise. contact. Yes. Speak to you all later. Right. See you later. Good day. Bye bye.